Welcome everybody. My name is Dustin Brevet. I'm the Global Product Manager for Membrane Shower Systems and Floor Heat here with Ladacrete. And with me today I have Adrian Rivera, one of our technical sales reps from the Southeast. We're going to take you through a walk of one of our shower system installations. We're going to start with the backbone being our Hydroban shower system kits, which include a lot of the, uh, basically it's a shower in a box, if you will. So we'll walk you through that. We're going to give you a basic installation with some different options for seam treatment, some different options for finishing with our flange, our bonding flange drains and our different grade types and kind of field any questions that you have while we go along the way. So remember, keep those questions and comments coming. There's gonna be somebody answering them in the back in real time. We'll be able to get your answers as quick as possible. So remember to keep those flowing throughout this, uh, throughout this journey. So with that, we'll get started and we'll uh, dive in a little bit. So as we get started, you can see we have this mock-up shower bay. Adrian is showing off the shower pan. This is a polystyr expanded polystyrene pan. It is three pound density, two piece in nature. And what we do recommend before any installation is dry fitting the pan. So you can see we have a naked substrate right now. Adrian's gonna get started and make sure that the pan fits with the outlet that we cut out. So we have a seamless installation when it's time to integrate the flange and connect to the waste outlet. So now that we've established that the pan does in fact fit the way we want, we're gonna go ahead and get started with thin setting the pan down to the substrate. Now for liberty and timing purposes, we've already mixed up a batch of thin set. We have our, we have our tri light, which is a very versatile, lightweight mortar that works with a number of different substrates. It's easy to use. And like I said, very versatile in nature. So it's easy to spread and like very lightweight. So again, eye on the contractor, eye on longevity. We wanna put less strain on those muscles, both through transportation to the installation and during the installation itself. So you're gonna see Adrian get started here in a minute. The key is keying that mortar into the substrate. We wanna get, get a good base coat. So once he's able to spread and ultimately attach the pan, we have good consistent coverage throughout. So while he's doing that, I'll give you some, I'll give you some background on the shower kit system. Uh, we sell these both as a kit, so a shower in a box and also a la carte. The, the kit we have today is a 3260 center drain option. We also have 3260 off center drain options for tub conversions. We have 38 by 38, 48 by 48, 48 by 72, and 72 by 72 options that come in both kit and pan form. Uh, when I mention just the pan, the pan itself comes exactly as I stated, the pan itself with a pre-cut piece of sheet membrane, which we're gonna use on the kit as well, that's gonna go over the top of the pan to secure the waterproofing once the pan is down to the substrate. In addition to the pan and the sheet membrane, when we're talking about the kit, each kit comes with some extra bells and whistles. So we have our Hydroban mixing valve seal, our Hydroban pipe collar, set of two or set of set of two inside and outside corners as well that act and feel and, and apply the same as our regular sheet membrane. So with a with a thin set adhered down. It's also going to come with a tube of our adhesive and sealant, which is going to allow you to seal up any coves, corners, and transitions, or stacking of board. So it's very versatile in that, and also seal up nail holes. And then for each of our kits, it comes with a corresponding curb that comes along with it. The one I have in my hand is a modified 24-inch curb because it comes in 24-inch increments. So for the sake of this specific pan, we're looking at 60 on the long end. So you'd have two 24s plus a third that you'd have to cut in half to make up for that 60, make up for that 60 dimension. So we took the liberty of uh, cutting that beforehand, so we were just ready to go for this installation. For the adherence to the floor or the substrate, Adrian's working with a uh, 
basic V-notch trowel, just really getting good con consistent coverage so we can press the pan into the substrate to get that nice even spread, knock down those ridges and get that even spread throughout the bottom of the pan. All right. While he's doing that, or while he's getting ready to put it down, he's also going to back butter the pan. That's going to help prep the pan and give better adherence to the thin set that's already on the substrate. While he's doing that, and while, you while the bottom of the pan is exposed, we also have guide markers for those that want to cut the pan down or have to modify on site. We know that in a lot of cases, framing is not perfect. When you get on a job site, I think 100% of installers will tell you there's some level of manipulation that needs to be done to the framing in some form or fashion. So never, never, it's never absolute, if you will. So we do understand that you will have to modify these. That's the beauty of the foam pan. The foam pan can cut down very easy with a utility knife, a circ saw, many of the common tools that you guys probably already have in your toolbox. Very easy to manipulate, to maneuver around tough angles or inconsistencies with the framing or the flooring. So as you can see, he's got nice coverage on the first half of the pan. We're gonna move on to the second. While he's doing that, you can also see on the pan, there's identifying markers that show the dimensions of the pan itself. There's some guide markers for diagnostic purposes. If you wanna remember the pan that's used, the SKU number is also on there or the dimensions are on there as well. Now you can see the groove channels on there. That acts as the connection for the pan itself. Adrian's marrying those up and then he's gonna lay it down onto the floor. Around all of the channels on the pans, you're also gonna have the rabbit joints which act for adherence with the curb. So a bead of adhesive and sealant will go, curb is pressed in, and or the wall board that you would use for this installation. For ours today, we're using our hydroband board. I'll get into that in a minute in a little more detail but it also allows for the, the board or the cement backer board, the hardy backer board, depending on what you're using for your wall solution, to fit directly into that channel and groove in nicely. We'll treat that seam later. We'll walk you through a bunch of different options that we have for that, but that's the specific need or the, uh, the reasoning why the rabbit joint is around all, all four sides. So now we have the pan down. We're gonna take a pause because we are gonna waterproof this with our hydroband sheet membrane today. So our hydroband sheet membrane is a thick or a woven bondable plastic sheet membrane that we're going to dry fit because what we want to do now, and I'll just drop this down for you. We are going to cut out. We're going to mark and cut out the hole where the bonding flange drain is going to go in because there's a little bit of prep work that needs to be done after the fact when adhering down or a attaching the drain to the waste outlet and then adhering down the adjustment ring to allow for some play after that when you're putting in your final tiles or when you're tiling around the drain. All right, so we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna mark out, we, draw, we dry fit the sheet membrane down to the pan to find the waste outlet. Adrian's got a basic utility knife, simple rule of thumb, make a quick cross. So you're just making a quick lowercase t or a cross cut you're able to mark out where that's gonna be because you're eventually gonna drop the bonding flange or you're gonna drop the adjustment ring with the grate on top of it in that hole to the corresponding flange that's gonna be on the bottom side of the pan. Hold that down for you, good. Get it out. Save that for later. All right, now that we have the Piece pre-cut, we have the pan, then set it down to the substrate or adhere to the substrate. Adrian's just gonna score off the rest of the thin set, clean it up a bit, and then we'll start with applying the um, board to the wall. So like I said, for the sake of this installation, we're gonna use our hydroband board. So 
So our HydraBand board is a lightweight, dense expand, uh, XPS foam board. It's cut in a variety of different thicknesses and we have two different dimensions. For the sake of this installation, we're using our three by five by half inch HydraBand board. It's one of our most common sizes. We also have the half inch in a four by eight variety and they're sold in both bundles, packs, and also, and also by the pallet. What makes this unique is the very, is the adherence of the facer to the, to the foam itself. It's very dense and very durable. We like to think it's one of the most dense and durable boards on the market while still remaining lightweight. Again, when I talked about Trilite earlier, we talked about you know, really taking care of our contractors or our installers, both during the installation and transporting these goods around. It is a lot lighter than some of the other solutions available, and that's what's made itself find a real good niche within this, uh, within this space. So what Adrian's doing right now, because we're gonna put the board on the wall and we wanna protect the integrity of the pan, we recommend that you put a sheet of plywood down or one of these sheets of hydroband board down so you can put weight on those boards while you're screwing them in, while you're adhering the boards to the joists or the framing. You good? Yep. All right. So, pretty simple. Adrian's going to just drill these into the drill these directly into the framing. Uh, galvanized screws, Torx, Phillips head doesn't really matter as long as they're galvanized steel. The rule of thumb on this is every 12 inches you're going to want to put a screw in in terms of the uh, the vertical on the stud. We have guide markers that are roughly four inches apart. So the dots on there not only help with the modification of the board should you need to cut it down, which we did for this installation. <clears throat> we cut down the bottom so it would fit on the rabbit joint. Very easy to cut with a utility knife or a circus claw. Scores, scores extremely easy. Every 12 inches we're gonna be putting a screw. So if you think about it, it's every three or four of those, of those guide markers or those dots. So they act as guides for the nails and they also act as guides for cutting. Um, just to answer any potential questions that might be asked. And like I said, keep those questions coming while we're going, right? We do have somebody back answering in real time. Um, the QR code on there helps us out for lot identification. That's not necessarily gonna bring you to anywhere where there's gonna be a data sheet or any installation videos. We have those separately on both living at floor and decor and also latercrete.com. Those, those QR codes are more for us for identification purposes with regard to uh, production manufacturing and lot numbers. So in case anybody comes through with that question. Hey, screws go in pretty easy, right? Yep. Pretty easy. I mean, they sink, they sink right in. Again, we're going to be sealing those up with a basic putty knife or a margin trowel and some of our adhesive and sealant later. We also have the option to coat them with Hydraban or Hydrabarrier Plus, any of our liquid applied waterproofing options, as well as cutting some of the squares of our seam tape and throwing thin set down and putting up little patches. So we have a number of different ways to choose your adventure with regard to sealing nails and also treating seams. And again, we'll, we'll go into that in a little more detail when the, when the second board is up and the pan is thin set it down, um, the uh, sheet membrane is down on the pan. You want the small one? Which one do you want? You want to do the, do the you can do the nails after you want. Oh, yeah, let's put this one in first. Yeah, we'll put, put, put all the boards in and then we'll do the, then we'll treat the seams. So we have one of the walls up. We, we did it in two ways because we wanted to show you both options. We have, it we have it vertically, and then we're gonna put two boards up horizontally. Again, depending on, depending on the, um, the job site conditions or the, in or, the, or the dimensions of the installation area, we have the ability to stack boards like Adrian's doing. We cut those to make sure it would fit within this, within this framing. So you can do it both vertically and horizontally. Obviously, when you're doing it horizontally and vertically and you're using multiple boards, you're going to have to treat that seam. And that's kind of what we're going to show you a little bit later on, like I've been alluding to. So for the sake of this one, he's going to stack two of the three by fives uh, horizontally, one on top of the other.
So again, when you're, when you're stacking multiple boards, we're gonna follow the same rule of thumb as if it was one of the boards horizontally. It's every, excuse me, it's every 12, every 12 inches you're gonna be putting a screw through, right? It's a little bit different in nature that you're gonna eventually have to treat that seam, but for the most part, a horizontally stacked board acts as the same as a vertically placed board every 12 inches. And again, the guide markers, the dots, they're there to help you, they're there to guide you. All right, so now that we have the boards up, we're gonna take we're gonna take we're gonna take pause and we're gonna do some of the different seam treatments. So for this specific one, remember we have three we have three different seams that we're gonna be actually four that we're gonna be working off. Board to board in the corner, board on top of board horizontally, and then the two board to pan connections on the floor. We're gonna start off with the thin set method and the seam tape in the back corner. So what Adrian's gonna do is get that trowel, get some of that, get some of that thin set, and then we're gonna apply the sheet membrane to the back corner. So again, that seam tape is really just a cut down version or a taped version, a taped size version of our sheet membrane. We sell it in two different lengths both five inches wide. We have a 16, uh, 16 footer and we have a 98 and a half footer. That's available uh, at Floor and Decor in both the shower bay and online. So quick measurement just to get for sizing purposes. Then we're gonna cut it down. One thing to note, and I forgot to touch on and I apologize, all of our sheet membrane are steam shower rated. So when you think about the key ASTM, I, think, I believe it's E96, uh, E96 we are steam shower rated, as is the facer on our hydroband board. 
So if you're looking to do steam shower, spa, steam room, all of those type of installations can work and are applicable for this specific material. In addition to the half inch hydro band board, we also have three by five quarter inch. We have three by five, five eighths inch. We have three by five, one inch and three by five, two inch. And then the other variation on the half inch size and as well as the three by five is four by eight. So if you want that true sealing the floor uh, solution, we have that available as well. Like I said, available in single sheets, bundles and available by the pallet. So again, what Adrian's gonna be doing is taking that same trowel, that, that V-notch, he's gonna get it into the corners, both left and right side, or right and left, depending on how you're viewing, and then just apply, that seam, apply the seam tape straight down. Now what Adrian's doing right now to help himself out to make it a little bit easier is creasing the corner so it fits into that, fits into that right angle a little bit easier than having to apply it after the fact. And then he's gonna press it down. He's gonna start by pushing down through the middle and then pressing out the side to get rid of that extra thin set to get that good bond to the, uh, to the, hydro, to the non woven part of the hydro band board. Now, the reason why the Hydroband seam tape is roughly about five inches, we like to have that two inch, at least a two inch overlap on each side of a given transition or a given gap that you're trying to bridge or cover up. Um, like I said, we, it comes in two different lengths, 16, inches, 16 feet and 98 and a half, uh, 98 and a half feet. While we're still discussing sheet membrane, another, another thing that I think I neglected to include when I referenced the kits, a roll of sheet membrane will come along with it. That's in addition to the pre-cut floor piece. This will allow you to, if you're choosing to use cement backer board, this will allow you to waterproof that backer board uh, directly out of the box. The roll, the size of the roll that comes with each, it varies by kit. You can check our website or the Floor and Decor website for more details on the exact sizing of the roll that comes with each of the corresponding kits.
All right, so now that, we, now that Adrian has the board up and the seam treated, so effectively um, bonding those two boards, we're gonna remove the security, the security board for the, for the pan itself. And now we're gonna get on to the uh, bonding flange drain installation. So like we did with the pan, we recommend that we dry fit the bonding flange drain into the cutout of the pan to make sure that you are in accordance or in, in the location that it needs to be for connection to the waste outlet. So as you can see, we have a good fit and we're gonna get started on taking that bonding flange and adhering it directly to the bottom of the pan. So much like we do when we apply the sheet membrane to the pan, Adrian's gonna spread the thin set all around the bottom rim and then press in that bonding flange. And as he does it, I'll talk through some of the intricacy. But while he tees that up, let me just talk about the, the, the specific parts that come along with the bonding flange drain. You have the bonding flange itself, which is similar to the one that Adrian's, uh, Adrian's using for this installation. It comes with a protection cap for the mortar, and I'll get into that when I connect it to, and then the adjusting ring that is specific to this tile in or tile on option. They have four silicone feet that you sit the finishing plate on top of, it fits in nice and snug, makes a nice snap so you know that you're there. You're gonna, you're gonna adhere and apply that final tile. But before doing so and during the installation, you have the protection cap over the top, which is gonna allow to stop mortar from getting in or extra thin set getting in and gunking up the waste outlet. And then when you peel it away, a nice crisp finish around all four edges of that final tile. We have these squares or these, these mortar, they basically act as a bonding agent. As you press it in, thin set seeps out, you flat trial it down, and that allows for a better bond. And we also have a roughed up finished surface, which is gonna allow for better adhesion once the thin set is put on top for the sheet membrane to bond to as well. The last piece on the bottom side, all of our bonding flanges come with a three inch uh, adapter. So you put this on if you're dealing with three inch waste outlets and it extends the size of that pipe to accept the three inch waste outlet. Last but not least, I forgot to mention all of our bonding flanges come in in both PVC and ABS. So now that the bonding flange is installed, we're gonna start with spreading and applying thin set to the base pan itself. And that is gonna act as the main bonding agent between the sheet membrane and the extruded polystyrene pan.
Guys, just as a reminder, I know we mentioned it a couple times, but we do have somebody answering questions in real time. Keep them coming, we'll get them answered. There's no such thing as a silly question. Believe me, we wanna hear from you. We wanna give you guys feedback, so feel free to just fire away. So now Adrian is done applying all of the thin set to the bottom of the pan. Our next step, because we're gonna do a curbed shower, uh, we're gonna put down the curbs that came with it. Now again, with all of our kits, the curbs come in 24 inch increments. So you're gonna get the amount of curbs needed to fill the largest side of the pan. So for this case, we're looking at a 3260. You're gonna get three 24 inch curbs. Obviously to make up the difference because you're gonna get 72 inches worth of curb, we're gonna have to cut one of those in half. For time, for time's sake, we already cut one of those down. I believe Adrian cut it with the Cirque saw we have in the back. Make it that 12 inch increment. So now we have 60 inches of curb that we're gonna adhere directly to the pan, in this case, with the tube of adhesive and sealant that was given to you in the kit. So again, it's just applying a liberal bead on top of that rabbit joint, pressing the preformed curb into that rabbit joint, and that's gonna allow for it to bonding, bond, act as the bonding agent between those two pieces. All right, so now that the curb is adhered, much like what we did with the pan, we're gonna, th we're gonna have to put thin set and apply thin set directly over the top of the curb. So I'll hold that for you if you will. With our sheet membrane, the pre-cut pieces on the floor, we do account for the use of a curb. So like in this instance, this necessarily, because the pan is 32 inches wide, is a little bit longer. I believe it's 36 inches to account for the two or 38 inches to account for the extra dimensions of the curb itself and the sheet membrane will enact and enact and adhere the same as it would to the pan itself.
All right, now that we have thin set coverage across the pan and the curb, the curb adhered to the pan, we're gonna drop that final piece of sheet membrane down on top of the pan and the curb. Again, as I referenced earlier, the pre-cut pieces for the floor portion are oversized to account for overlap on top of and over the curb. Now, while Adrian is laying out that sheet membrane, I just want to take the opportunity to walk you through some of the other components that we have as part of the Hydroband shower system. We talked about the different drain finishes earlier, but we also do have a full line of niches. We have a 12 by 20, we have 12, a 12 by 12 split, a 12 by 20 split, a 12 by 8 by 6. So we have a variety of different niches. We have two or three different seats. We have a 16 by 16 triangle, a 16 by 16 convex, and then we also have a full array of benches. So this one here is a 35 by 11, so 11 high, 35 wide. We have various pre-treated or extra curbs that you can order. We have curb overlays. We also make extensions and ramps. So we do really truly have a full breadth of line within the space. And if for some reason you don't see a size that you like, we have, the ability, we have the ability to order custom pans as well. All of the components that I just walked you through, the niches, the benches, the seats and curbed, come pre-waterproofed. So there is minimal work that needs to be done in terms of getting these ready for installation. You don't have to go through any waterproofing process with a liquid or a sheet membrane and a thin set. These come with the uh, Hydroban waterproofing already applied to them. So they are ready, ready to install out of the box. So much like the way he adhered the seam tape to that board on board, board on board transition, he's now pushing through the thin set to apply it and push it through to adhere it from the pan directly to the back side of the curb and then up over the curb and onto the surrounding or the outside floor of the shower. Again, the process he's going through is just applying a little bit of pressure at an angle to push through, push through and out some of that excess thin set. And that can be done with the flat side of the trowel, a margin trowel, or pick your tool of choice. In this instance, he's using the flat side of the trowel. So the goal here now is once that sheet membrane is fully applied over the curb and then set it down to the subfloor, we're going to take our adjusting ring, which we've pre-adjusted with one of our brush stainless or polished stainless steel grates. We're going to drop that into the pre-cutout hole for dry fitting purposes, and then we're going to thin set that down directly on top of the sheet membrane. So again, now it's sheet membrane throughout and under everything that's going to flow through this drain. So everything's going to channel back to the waste outlet.
So again, much like the way he adhered the membrane to the flange, it's simply spreading thin set in a circular pattern along the outside of the drain and then pressing that adjusting ring directly into the thin set. Now, while the thin set dries, there is the ability for manipulation within that, within the, there's a little bit of play within the connection itself. So it can allow for left, right movement depending on how you want to lay out or how that final tie out layout is going to be. All right, so now we've adhered the board, we've treated the first vertical seam, we've adhered the sheet membrane, we've installed the drain. Now for time purposes, obviously you would wait for the thin set to cure to get on top of the sheet membrane. But for the sake of this video, we want to speed it up a little bit. So what we're going to do is show you two other options that we have for seam treatment or three other options because we have the board there, show you how to seal, seal off some of those nails and then theoretically you'd be in a position where you're ready to tile both the wall and the floor. So with that, we'll start with, again, we'll do the adhesive and sealant in the bottom left hand corner. So Adrian's gonna take that caulk gun, literally shoot a liberal bead between the two planes, flatten it out with either the flat end of the trowel, the margin trowel, whatever your tool of choice is, can act as that, as, as that, um, that flattening agent to, uh, to bring the two together. Another option to do that, as I spoke about earlier, is the inside outside corners that do come with the kit option. They also are sold a la carte, uh, available both in store and online. You have the ability to drop these, pre these preformed corners directly into or over the outside of a curb or the inside of the, uh, the uh, transition points. And they act much like our sheet membrane and, and sure up those areas of transition. So again, we, we ask for a liberal bead of the adhesive and sealant because by flattening it out, it gives you that same two inch overlap that we referenced earlier with the pre, with the preformed or pre-manufactured sheet membrane. So that's two of our options. We have a third and that is our liquid applied hydroban. Uh, specific to floor and decor, you have the option to buy either hydroban or hydrobarrier plus available in five and one gallon denominations for Hydroban and one gallon, three and a half gallon and five gallon for Hydrobarrier Plus. And that is literally as simple as painting the membrane on. It provides both um, ANSI 1810 waterproofing protection and then 1812 crack isolation protection so it can act as a crack bridging agent.
Now it's important to note for Hydra Ban, the best way to do it, it's applied in two coats. Same goes for Hydra Barrier Plus, and that just acts to sure up any pinholes that would have come through during the first coat. Depend substrate dependent, but you can apply the second coat in as little as 30 minutes. What's neat about Hydraban and Hydra Barrier Plus is both have color change and curing technology. So as water evaporates itself or removes itself from the material, you'll see the color change. So you'll know that, that is, that's essentially your, your indicator to go ahead and apply that second coat. Recommended mill thickness on these is 15 to 20 wet. You can check it with a mill gauge or basic rule of thumb if you're going over cement backer board or a Hydraban board, cover up the print behind it, that gives you pretty much really the coverage that you're looking for. So what Adrian's also doing on the right side, there's another nail sailing option. You can use the Hydraban liquid as well. On the left side, if we get into it, you can also use that same adhesive and sealant and just flatten it down with a, uh, with a margin trowel or a putty knife. And again, much like the adhesive and sealant, the floor to wall transition as well with the hydro, with the hydro band or the hydro barrier liquid. So again, it's a choose your own adventure. It's whatever your preference is. We know the guys like to work in a lot of different ways. Not every job is the same. Not every installer is the same. So we have a number of different options to satisfy your needs around treating sieves, co seams, corners, coves, and transitions. And again, for time-saving purposes, we'll apply in one coat, but essentially you should wait the recommended cure time, substrate dependent, check your data sheet, and your manufacturer's installation instructions, but you would theoretically apply a second coat when going the Hydraban sheet route. With the, net, with the adhesive and sealant, that's probably the quickest option you have in terms of it being one coat. So it's as simple as shooting a, shooting a bead on or shooting a dab on and then hitting it with the margin trowel or a putty knife and knocking it down which Adrian's gonna demonstrate right now for us. All right, so now we have you in a spot where you're essentially ready to tile. But before that, we want to show you how to adhere our new trim. So Laticrete has introduced, partnering with Floor & Decor, a full suite of trims and profiles in both aluminum, stainless, and PVC. Um, very easy to install. The focus of this was to be as easy in, as install as possible. Couple of the other key features, we will have color matching, meaning that we can match our profiles and trims to any of our popular grout colors. So you have that option as well for a fully customizable solution for your installation needs. In addition, or from a timing perspective, we, like, we are going to have a full range available through by the end of 2024 in all floor and decor locations. If you need any specialty SKUs, they're always available for special order through the website or through the pro desk or through the store itself. So with that, Adrian is gonna put the finishing touches on this installation by showing you how to install one of our new trims to the back side of the cement backer board with the tile he has in his hand right now, so.
All right. So just again, want to thank you guys for taking the time out with us today. Spend a little time with us. Learn a little something about Laticrete. Us learn a little bit of something about you based on the comments and questions that came through in the chat. Again, keep them coming. We're going to keep that chat open after the video ends. So for some overflow, we'll continue to ask questions for a little bit of time afterwards. So again, like I said, thank you for taking the time out. I hope you enjoyed us walking you through both our system installation, our system components, and then introducing the new line of profiles and trims we got coming for you. Again, partnering with Floor & Decor. Truly excited about the partnership. Truly excited to help you guys make your installation life or your work life as easy as possible. And again, thank you for taking the time out. We appreciate it.